Jeff, what's your assessment just of the action that we've seen, the excitement that we saw in the market last week following that inflation print, and then, of course, what we could expect as we head into the end of the year? Well, it's kind of the same thing that we've had the entire year when we have these false rallies. You know, dollar weakness and yields drop mean the market go up. And so, you know, with a lot more pressure of the upside with rates probably peaking in March of April, just like Rob said, we expect more volatility coming in, in, into the fold here. This is just going to be a normal state of where dollar drops, yields drop, market goes up, and then vice versa, market corrects. Until we see this rate plateau and we really see some good, some good areas where inflation can be. And Jeff, we did hear from Brainerd really talking about sort of having the medicine from the Fed really take effect and paying more attention to perhaps what they're seeing with that lagging data versus the real economy. But with the potential for a recession on deck, then how should people be viewing this? What lens do you view your investment strategy through right now? That's a really good question. I think the lens needs to be we know stocks are probably going to be cheaper here and in a little bit of a longer term than they are in the short term. So why not hold a Treasury paying four percent? I mean, it's just stupid. The writing is on the wall. If you want to be long in the market right now, I'd call that the turd trade at this stage of the uh, rate cycle. And let's not pull any punches. Every time rates go up in this type of an environment, the greatest rate increases in history, all 11 rate hiking cycles have ended up in what? The big R, the big recession. And that's going to happen again, no doubt. How deep of a recession, Jeff, are you expecting? You know, I wish I had the answer to that. But based on the way they're raising rates, I think I look for a very significant pullback in the economy. We are seeing things like real estate, mortgage applications in those areas getting crushed right now. A lot of activity is dropping. Finance is dropping. Um, you know, it depends on, on how many layoffs we see or how it happens to earnings. But we do know in this type of environment with a 5 percent 10 year note, it's going to be very challenging headwinds. But it's going to be a longer dated cycle than normal. To, um, to recover from. This is a 12 to 24 month process from here, even though we're almost, you know what, 10, 11 months into the correction here. This is gonna be a little bit longer than normal. And Jeff, as Rob was saying there, we have a number of big box retailers reporting earnings this week, your Home Depot, Walmart, Target. What are you watching for in those earnings reports in terms of what that's going to tell you about how the consumer is actually faring? Well, I think it's the difference between discretionary and non-discretionary. We know in recessive environments, what happens there is, it, you know, people start to pull back. But a, a large part of the problem still is we still have a lot of COVID pent up demand. And that's why consumers are still spending. It's the big ticket items that require, you know, higher rates of interest and higher monthly payments that we see are getting shellacked. And that's going to take some time to work its way through. All right. Good stuff. Rob Hayworth, Jeff Small, appreciate you both being here.